Hello guys, I hope you're well. So today we're going to look at my second track of my Short Circuit EP, which is called Contact, where we'll be focusing on different arrangement techniques I've used. So let's get inside Ableton. Cool, so here is the whole project of the track. I'll just do a little background on the track again. So this one was made quite recently at the tail end of 2022 and I finished it in February 2023, I believe. So quite a short turnaround on this one on being released. Um, it's actually one of my favorite tracks I've probably made. It's very rolling, it's very simple. And if I had to pick one track to showcase my sound, it would probably be this one. So for referencing on this track, I was using Wheats' track, Heads Roll. Um, I really like the breakdown in that track, sort of a synth. Uh, you can probably start to hear familiarities when I play through the breakdown of this track, but it's got its own distinct feel. It doesn't feel like a direct copy of it. So I'll just play it through the main breakdown into the drop, just so you can understand and hear what the track actually sounds like. So you get the gist of a track, quite underground, or very underground actually, very rolling, but still got a nice groove to it as well. So we will start off with the intro for track, which is very simple. It is literally just the kick, the bass, the clap, a few little hi-hats, and the percussion. I often start my track with the kick and the bass in. I just sound, just think it sounds quite full already from the get-go. Um, it depends on the style of track, but often my basses are very sub subby in the lower frequencies, so they can be mixed in very easily when DJing. So then on bar 17, we have some new elements coming in where we just build in to the drop where it says hats in. So we have the main vocal hit. It's just sort of a glitched out vocal, I believe from Splice, which I'm just running through Tantra and some effects plugins. This is the only vocal in the track. Everything else is just drums, a few synths and the bass line. So yeah, it doesn't have a major hook. The main hook is probably just the rhythm and the melody in the breakdown, which we will get to. So that just comes on, on the beat, so it has this effect. We are running it through send A, which is a reverb. Send C, which is a echo. And then I've just got a phasing preset from the frequency shifter. So this is just creating some movement within the echo. I always use send and returns because this allows for the full body of the original sound to come through, but you still get the effect that you want. 
so if we just play the send and return so we can hear what it's doing see it's got quite a long tail on it and it's doing quite a lot of phasing within that frequency shifter now if this was just on the channel itself it would sound too washed out the feedback would go on for too long and then you're just drawing in loads of automation lines through feedbacks decays reverbs it just becomes a mess in my opinion doing it through send and returns you just get such a clean effect <laughs> without losing the body of the sample that's being affected. So if I just turn this, send the return off. You can hear how, what it's doing and how, what it's affecting. But it's very subtle and that's why I love send and returns. So then on bar 17, we have this 16th hat rising in. Actually, it just comes in straight away. Because I have that vocal effect and the reverb and the echo on that, it doesn't need to be filtered in or automated in. It just comes in straight away. We also have our first bass synth. <laughs> These are just samples from different sample packs. I believe they are from the Sample from Mars sample packs, which are very good. Um, I'm not too sure if they're still on offer, but I'd definitely check them out. I do this quite a lot within my tracks, is use bass samples as synths. I just find you can get a really nice effect and you can add to the rhythm of the bass line, but add more character and more variety to it with using different samples. And it's so much easier just using pre-made samples than trying to recreate your own as well. So we just play this from bar 17. So then we just have this closed hi-hat come in. So it starts off with a reverse. I do this a lot in my tracks, especially with the arrangement. It just helps things flow. If you are doing stuff before it actually is meant to come in. So if I just deactivate this one, you'll see the difference in what I mean. So it still sounds good, but when I just add that reverse it in, it just helps transition for when that closed hat comes in adds more variety makes something sort of for the listener to listen out for so i do this in pretty much all my tracks for the past six to eight months and it is i believe it's e, e, e yeah so it is a fab filter satin and on it, I'm just using one of the presets in the effects section called Glitch Beat 03. And what this does is it just really mangles up the hi hats. If I just start driving it really high, so you can hear what it's doing there. It's just modulating and adding some effect to the hi hat. It's very subtle and you can see it's not actually doing much but it's doing something and all these little uh, sort of ear candy tricks if you want to call them when you start applying it to hi-hats claps percussions synths it all really starts adding up to have a big effect and once again it's running for a send and return because if i had that on the channel itself it would just be destroying the original sound. I wouldn't be able to get that attack and front of the hi-hat that I still want to pop through the mix. And then lastly, effects again through send returns, we are using D, which is effect rack. 
I believe I went over this in my energy breakdown. It is just a crystallizer, which is sort of a pitch shifting echo. I'm just using the standard preset, bring up the dry wet all the way. And again, it's just like a subtle delay, which helps sort of build sort of space and sort of create some tension and then drops it back in. So if I just play that from here. subtle but it's working and we're just running that for a reverb as well on this breakdown nothing major and there we go so we just drop in with the full groove there pretty much there's a few hi-hats that come in later on but i'll keep it rolling pretty much from the start yeah, it would be important to note as well what I've just done with the low end of the track here. So I set up an auto filter on my master chain. I then can automate the filter itself and turn it on and off. And as you can see from the automation line, this is on here. So it is cutting at 144 hertz. So anything below that is being cut. Then it's being turned off and that's when it drops in. It's just a really easy way to automate your low end. If you want to separate it between your bass and your kick, you can do so. Um, but often, more than not, I will just do it on my master chain because it's so easy to do. just starting to create a bit of call and response within these sort of bass simps or bass rhythm as I've called it. So call and responses is when one hits or one calls, the other then responds. So what I mean by this is this one calls, this one then responds. And this is how you create dynamic and interesting grooves when you're within your track. So I guess it'd be important to note as well that I'm using another send and return on this bass synth i believe i use it on all the synths throughout the track and it is this echo down here which is got quite a high feedback again quite a lot of reverb and it's on 16th so it's not echoing too long it's sort of short on the 16th notes but it has this really nice sort of washed out effect and you can see i've done it here just before it drops in on bar 25 and if I just carry on across, you can see I build it up during the breakdowns and I'm just doing it on every other one or some random hits here and there. Again, I'm just creating interest and variety within the groove because there's not too much going on within this track. If we just look at the actual groove itself, there's about 27 channels, which isn't much at all. So let's play it back from here. <clears throat> nice little kick roll there just to sort of help drop into bar 41 you don't always have to have like snare rolls clap fills or taking the kick out to sort of transition between these eight bars it can just be something simple like that and nothing new actually comes in on this eight bar um, but the groove so tight in this track it doesn't actually need it so i'll just play this break breakdown out and then we'll go over what's going on Sweet. 
So we'll start from the top. So just to transition out of the groove, we've got another little kick pattern here. Nothing crazy. The bass is being low cut and halfway through the breakdown, it just ends. I imagine I'm automating this. Nope, so it's just playing out and then it just comes out. Because there's quite a lot of echoes and stuff like that going on within this track, stuff can come out quite suddenly and it not feel empty. If your track is quite dry, it's usually worth automating stuff with either utilities or auto filters just to help that sort of transition feel more natural. So if we're looking at the drums, nothing going on here, just literally a filter, some reverb, some delay, and echo. So those send and returns are just helping fill out the sort of filter, if that makes sense. So as that's being filtered out, there's just more going on within that group, which is being caused by the delays and the echoes and reverbs. The clap just comes out. And we're just left with the hi-hats. It's very subtle and you can barely hear it, but it's just keeping something in there some sort of drum rhythm just a sort of for the listener to keep an eye out for and then it completely comes out for four bars before we drop it back in so through the perk group you can see we've got probably a lot of automation going on here so we've got the echo we have got the effects rack and we are running this one through the satin that we were using for the hi-hats so if we just solo this by itself still quite dry you can just hear some of the effects starting to work now and as you can see I've just sort of taken out some of the percussion just to sort of drop that energy down so then when it comes in it comes in with some serious power so the synths is the most interesting part during the breakdown so let's just go through it so we're running this bass rhythm group which is if you're unaware what this is that's what the bass rhythm is so like i said earlier that's sort of causing that call and response so we are just reverbing that on the whole group itself on the whole synth group reverb and very slightly with the crystallizer but that's not doing too much so i'm just taking out some of the hits and just not putting them in randomly just just putting them in different to where they were placed within the groove earlier um, it just adds some variety and interest during the breakdown we then have this sort of knock bass sound come in sounds really nice and then we have another synth again these are all just bass samples that I'm just either reversing changing the pitch um, affecting with plugins and stuff like that if you want to see more on this comment down below and I will do a tutorial on how I turn bass synths or bass loops bass samples in two synths. So here we have the pad. So this is just a sample. Um, it's not actually a pad from a pack or anything. It is originally a vocal, I believe. Yeah, unfortunately, I've consolidated the clip, but it was um, like a space takeoff, um, like a spaceship takeoff video that I got from YouTube, or may have even been Beatport in the DJ tool section. I can't remember, but always look for interesting samples 
try and think outside of the box um, and it really adds to this sort of uh, spacey dark weird feeling sort of going on within this breakdown um, without that the track actually would sound really empty if I just play it without that <laughs> And then with it actually really is doing a lot within the track. Something so subtle like that can really make a difference to the atmosphere and the emotion it has on the listener. So next up we have the ARP, which is definitely my most favourite part of the track. It is from Mass FX. I believe it is two different sounds. Let's have a listen. Let's have a look to see if it's the same preset or not. So it's the same preset. I imagine I've just played with... Yeah, so Massive is very sensitive to velocity. What I mean by velocity is the note velocity, as you can see, I'm changing here. So I'm just using two layers to add um, some more depth. And like I said, the velocity is changing the character of the sound. I'd love to say I made this uh, preset or knew how it was made, but I have no idea. It just sounds really good. But that's why you should invest in some decent synthesizers when you get to a level where you feel comfortable with producing because they are then going to add to your skill set and add to your sound because you can just find great sounds to start with without having to try and make them yourself within some of the basic synthesizers that Ableton offers. So there's nothing crazy going on with this one, just it is running through the echo phasing, which is probably helping with that sort of weirdness throughout this track. And we are just filtering it up from the beginning of the breakdown. So this part is literally just a resampling of the echo from the synth. So if you just listen to the tail of that sort of reverb and delay of that synthesizer, all I've done is just resampled it and then looped a certain part. I've probably exaggerated some frequencies as well within the EQ. And I've also got it quite heavily panned as you can hear. And again, that's really helping fill out this breakdown. Uh, similarly to the pad, if you take that away, there's sort of be quite a lot of empty gaps. Pretty much last thing for this breakdown is just another bass synth. This one didn't fit very well in the groove. I think it's quite rough sounding. There's some very unpleasant frequencies in there. But because it's quite quiet in the mix, it's just, again, helping fill out certain spaces within this breakdown. Because the more you take away from breakdown, so we've stripped from bar 57, there's pretty much no drums in it and no bass line and no kick and very little percussion as well so you really need to work on filling out the track so there's enough going on the vocal just comes in on bar 61 everything then comes out and you just sort of get these tail ends of the reverbs and delays have we missed anything else? Uh, only two effects going on here, which is that, which is just like a reverse ride, nothing crazy, uh, and this effect. I imagine this was a sample that I've just reversed. I've cut off the end. In fact, let's have a look. Yep, you can see I've just cut off cut off the ends because there's just no need for that and if you go to the pitch I've actually pitched it down so if we just hit 
to zero. See what it sounds like originally. And I would have a feeling it was probably meant to sound like this originally. Not too sure if I reverse that or not, but reversing samples can have a really good effect and so can changing the pitch as well. Especially if you're wanting to make unique rises other than, you know, the standard white noise and reverse sort of crashes and stuff like that. So we will play out the groove until the next short breakdown because again, nothing much goes on because it's quite rolling. So we just had a new little synth come in. Again, it's not noticeable really, unless I pointed it out. It's just this sort of very short decayed square wave. I recently played this out um, of my own little master that I've done, and you can really hear this knock come through and it just sounds wicked in the club. Cool, let's go through that because for me, these sort of stand out little breakdowns, um, they're really important and I often do them a lot on my tracks. So first off, we had this other synth, which is just a, it is a preset from one of my pieces of hardware called Minilog. Uh, this sound more often than not always makes it into my tracks. In fact, I even call it BJR, which is my name, uh, bass hit. So if you know what preset is, then you can use it yourself, but I'm not telling you. So all I've done is just reversed it. Uh, I've got some effects going on there, but it's not really doing much. And then you, so that's just helping transition out of here because the whole groove pretty much comes out, kick comes out and all the drums do. That vocal again is helping with the transition. We have the acid coming in, which is something new for the listener to listen out for. This is the TB303, so the uh, Roland emulation or Roland soft synth. This thing's great. I actually have a what was it TD 303 right down here and I don't use it at all because the soft synth is far better and it's so much easier to use I'd argue that it actually sounds better than the Behringer hardware so it all comes out you sort of have that emptiness You're waiting for it to drop in you get the kick but here it's low cut, so you're just getting the transient to come in. And then you sort of get it to come in, and then you have another little fake drop where it sort of comes away again. These effects on the dance floor work really nicely. Again, it's just something different from the standard break, drop, keep it playing. It just keeps it very interesting. And again, it's something that I would consider probably part of my sound because I do it quite a lot. I've heavily reverbed the clap here, as you can see, which is helping fill out where these drums and the kick goes out. We've also got another little low cut here. So again, you get even more impact when it comes back in on bar 82. But it's nothing crazy arrangements technique. It's very simple and it's just using what is already in the track, but it just sounds really good and it works really well within this rolling rhythm. Just had a nice little reverse hat there. 
see I've just taken out a little section and added a few different notes. That's where the acid comes back in again. And then on to the main breakdown. You can see I just start taking away some of the synths That pad's coming back in Got a little acid hit there Arc coming in Drums filtered out by now And this is what makes this break different from the first one Is the melody of that arp, which again is really helping with this sort of trippy spaced out vibe. So let's just have a little bit more of an in detail look of what's going on. So you can see again I'm using this echo occasionally just to sort of help uh, fill out some of these bass synths, especially when these drums are coming away, just like I mentioned earlier. If you've got more stuff coming out, you're going to want to fill it back up in the breakdown, or else it can just sound a bit empty. We have this new synth, which comes in later on. The vocal is a bit more apparent in this breakdown. We have it at the start here and just before it drops in again. You can see here, this is where I'm sort of automating some of the echo of the feedback because it was just getting a bit too intense when it dropped back in and this is this feedback by automating it up and down with the decay that's what's creating this sort of washed out feeling and then for it to sort of suck you back in and then for the beat to come in so the main difference is here is i've added a few more effects as you can see so let's just go through each one. This is just a sample again. It's almost like a bass sample, I believe. But it sounds really nice, it's just a riser. Let's have a look at this one. I didn't even know this was in the track until I noticed, uh, until we're doing this today. It's probably not even doing any much. I don't even know if you can probably hear it in the track. No, you can't hear it, but we will go over what it's doing. It's effectively just creating a riser through an a uh, through a arpeggiator. So if we just listen to what it's doing, turn off the filter. You can just see it, I'm changing the rate as it goes on. And we're just automating that with a filter. Again, doing stuff like this, it's just a nice way to create your own touch on stuff instead of just finding samples from Splice or sample packs. Although samples are very good and make you more efficient and increase probably productivity and workflow, nothing can beat just sort of spending your own time and working on building your own effects. It's only going to enhance your skill as a producer, even if you can't hear it in the track and it's doing nothing. Still learn something from it. So then we've got this other... Yep, so that's just the same as that, but this one is just longer. And the pitch is different by the looks of it. So it's got the same name, so it's from the same sample pack, uh, but it's just very slightly different sounds. Doing the same thing though, just creating a riser. I've got another one here, which I believe was in the original breakdown. 
Yep. And the reverse crash. I don't need to play that because we all know what that is. And all of them together. Create that sort of sucked in effect as well, along with this echo, which we'll go over now. So if I just play the echo from here before we start automating it. So if we go on the feedback, you can see I'm bringing the feedback right up. So it's very high. And it's coming right back down. And we're leaving some in when it drops back in to help that transition. But it doesn't tail for too long. And then in the full track. And that's pretty much it for the main breakdown. Like I said, we changed the melody of this ARP. I've just added a few notes in. But those three layers together just, they sound great in my opinion. And you can really hear now what that echo is doing now I've paused on there. So let's play it from the drop and nothing really else much goes on. We have another little short breakdown here, um, but that is pretty much it, but we will play it anyway. <laughs> This is just a very short version of the two main breaks. As you can hear, drums filtering out, vocal effects. And unlike the other one where we had the low end cut where the kick comes in before the drop, we have it sort of come through here just because the bass lines come out. So it's quite empty for a little bit. And that kick will really flop not flump, thump through in a club. Same effect there where it sort of comes in, drops back out again and the clap is heavily reverbed. And this is where we come in with the synth that was in on the main breakdown. It's coming in just every now and again, not too frequently. Again, this is just a sample. Nothing, uh, nothing interesting. grooves just it seems to be like one of those never-ending grooves that you could just listen to on and on and on so on this little breakdown we just low cut kick comes out and we're just using some of the send the returns again i won't go through them because we've been through them enough in this arrangement breakdown and we're just stripping away the energy now because it's starting to come to the end of the track. We are at 5 minute 30. So if I was DJing, this is probably where I'd start to mix in my other track. So there's enough in there to still keep it interesting for this sort of 30 seconds to a minute before it ends. But there's enough out to start bringing in another track. So 
very important when arranging to start thinking about how you're going to mix this in and out because we are making club music so DJs need to be able to mix in and out of your tracks easily. When we come to the outro, just low cut, last hit the vocal and we're just sort of rinse and repeating how we started with the clap, the kick, the bass and a few little hi-hats and percussion. But here we've kept the low end in. Now we're cutting the low end. And that is the full track. Like I was just saying about thinking about how DJs are going to mix in and out. I try and not do anything fancy within the arrangement, especially on these last sort of 16 to 32 bars because this is where a DJ is probably going to loop it. So this is why there's no sort of risers or vocal. It's very sudden, because I would then, if it was myself, four eight bar loop, and then I'd be able to do my sort of transition or whatever by then. Hopefully I've mixed in the other track and I can just sort of keep the energy or the noise from this track without having to cut it. And there we go, that's it. So there you go. That is the arrangement breakdown of my track Contact, which is out end of March on the short circuit. I hope you guys learned a lot from that one. It's a very simple track, but sometimes that's the best way to do things. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.